Special Assistant Attorney General handling workers' comp cases from the defense side. Then I went to work for the city of Atlanta for nine years, and I was promoted there twice, starting as an associate, then an assistant, and then a senior, representing public safety. So the sheriff, corrections, fire, police. And then I also represented the Department of Procurement as well. And then after nine years, I got tired of the commute. <laughs> I was living in Lawrenceville at the time, and I distinctly remember traveling home and someone was standing on the bridge threatening to jump, to commit suicide. And this was in, I wanna say it was 2004, and the, the law enforcement stopped the traffic on 85 North, right at Jimmy Carter Boulevard. Nobody could go anywhere. They wouldn't allow anyone to exit. We couldn't go forward because this gentleman was threatening to jump off the bridge. And we literally had to shut our engines off. We got out of our cars and we talked because we couldn't go anywhere. And after a while, people were so angry, they started screaming, just jump already so we could go home. Just jump so we could go home. It was that event that finally caused me to say, I need a job in the county where I live, Gwinnett County. I need a job in Gwinnett County. And so at that point, I started visiting the Gwinnett County Bar Association, and I met a couple of folks, uh, one of which was Judge Pam South, and she was really nice. She was a judge on the state court, and I guess it was a couple months later, she called me and she said, hey, we got a judge position out here. You should apply. And I applied. And I interviewed, and I was told, we can't put you on the bench because you don't know anybody. You need to come and work out here in Gwinnett. And I said, that's the goal. That's why I applied. But that same judge who interviewed me called me a few months later and said, there's an opening in the Gwinnett County Law Department. You'd be perfect for it. There's a lawyer who's leaving. You do exactly what, you, what she does, but you do it in the city of Atlanta. And by the way, I already talked to the county attorney about you. She's already expecting your application and your resume. So that same judge actually got my job in Gwinnett County. And when I met him, I didn't like him, but he actually got my job. And then I worked there 18 years. I retired this past Wednesday. Um, I did not want to retire because I love my job. I had been promoted, I supervised other lawyers, I helped them manage their caseloads, I signed all of the cases, I signed all of the claims. I loved my job, but I was told by the people in authority that I had to resign in order to become a candidate for judge. That was difficult. I prayed for a long time. My husband, Dr. Anthony Williams over there, will tell you that I prayed for a long time because I love my job. But I love the people of Gwinnett more. And I knew that I could take my 30 years of experience in over 25 areas of the law to do more for everyday people than I could do as a deputy county attorney. That was the position I retired from. So that's, that's why. I want to be able to help everyday people. My clients for the last 26 years have been elected officials, 5,000 county employees, uh, the sheriff, the tax commissioner, the clerk of court, the judiciary. I actually represented the judges, uh, except the superior court judges. Um, but I couldn't help everyday people solve their legal problems. So that was the decision that I made. That's my why. Um, my platform, public safety, public safety, public safety, I'm tired of the shootings, mental health, a lot of the shootings come from people with mental health problems. Exactly. I mean, let's just be honest about it. You know, and human trafficking, those three things. Hi, Hi. come on in here. So that is my why. Um, 
In terms of my background, I've already shared my years of experience, but I've also been working in Gwinnett County a lot, a lot. I see some of my sorority sisters are here, so you know that. Um, but I have been involved in a lot of organizations, Leadership Gwinnett graduate. I'm on a nonprofit called Gwinnett Giving Girls, where we literally give money to start up nonprofits that serve women and children. And I've been on that a number of years. Of course, I'm very active in the Gwinnett County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Just ended my term as chair of the scholarship committee. Also served. So, of course, my sorority sister Lily's here shaking her head because she was on scholarship with me. So she can attest that I'm telling the truth. <laughs> and a fine job. <laughs> so, uh, Duana, sorry to interrupt you. No. I'm Sitte Faruqi. I want to have uh, some uh, questions. Uh, from the community, you know, which people ask always to new attorney and new candidate for vote, you know. Mm -hmm. So what is your plans? What are your goals? Why you want to uh, participate in the coming election? Okay, that's a very good question. As I was saying earlier, after 30 years, I wanted to be able to help everyday people. I can't do that as a deputy county attorney representing elected officials and 5,000 county employees. As a judge, I can help you and anyone in this room solve your legal problems. So that's the main reason um, I want to participate in the election process uh, in, on May 21st, 2024. The other reason is because I see some things in the judiciary that I don't like. Um, we have great judges, but some of them don't really have good temperance. And to be a good judge, you have to be even-tempered, you have to be patient, you have to be a good listener, and be willing to listen to everybody who appears in front of you. Excellent. My second question, uh, answer may be longer, but we, to the point, thank you, you gave very precise and, and uh, very good answer. Can you give a clapping for her? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You know. So... My second question is for those teenagers. They are not juvenile court, uh, uh, going to a juvenile system, no. For those who are uh, doing minor crimes, you know, and they are in the jails, you know, and their parents are poor, and uh, they are looking to the court, you know. Their future is spoiling, and they are looking to you guys who are coming, and they, you are in the Gonet County. I know a lot of families over there, they are suffering with this unnecessary punishment, unnecessary. So tell the implication of this, how you will solve, and uh, what is in your mind? Mm -hmm. So, of course, if it's a juvenile who's 16 years of age or younger, those, those individuals go through the juvenile court system, and they have creative sentencing, such as the SCRAP program and some other programs that will keep them out of jail. If you are 17 years old or older, then you would come to superior court, depending upon the nature of the crime, if it's, if it's a serious uh, crime, a felony, or, or if it's um, a misdemeanor, you would actually go to state court, which is not the court that I'm seeking to get on. But in terms of um, the court's ability, as a judge, I would have the ability to give an alternative sentence to someone um, other than jail. So if it's a minor crime, then we can put them in anger management courses. We can send them to uh, other rehabilitation programs. STRAP means Seeking the Right Amendable Path. Um, and that's a great program that we put a lot of uh, young people in um, through our court system. And once they've completed the program in nine months, then their conviction is wiped clean. Thank you, excellent. The last but not the least, you know. What is any message to the volunteers and they are just coming, they are not, uh, they were coming maybe next session, but uh, they are, they will come, and the general community who want to help you to achieve these goals, these goals. So please uh, give some message to our teenagers, volunteers, and the people like me, you know, and uh, in my community, sure. other communities, sure. please. So, of course, Gwinnett County is one of the most, most diverse counties in the entire southeast region. Together, we are very powerful. As a judge, I cannot make the laws, but
but I can certainly enforce those laws and I can partner with other groups to curb such issues as mental health, which is a big problem in our community, human trafficking. Uh, there needs to be a way to help those who survive human trafficking to get back on their feet so that they don't have a criminal uh, record, um, and public safety. We need more community safety. That means we need to have tougher laws as to who can get guns, tougher background checks, longer waiting periods, all of those things. So my message is, if you elect me, I promise you that my platform is going to be curbing mental health um, by putting people in the treatment facilities they need instead of putting them in jail, human trafficking, definitely helping those who are survivors to get back on their feet. Right now, they can be criminalized. They shouldn't be criminalized. They need to be helped to get back on their feet after being victimized. And they like to be called survivors. And then public safety, we definitely need to do more with public safety. Thank you, uh, Tuanda Williams. Thank you very much for this brief interview. Thank you, guys, you know. And uh, uh, thank you, give me time, five, ten minutes for this. And uh, this is the first interview. interview. Next time when you have more uh, fundraising. So I request for the audience, uh, my name is Sipte Farooqi from the Star Media, to vote Tuanda Williams. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>